More than 150 paramedics and 300 drivers have completed a week-long training ahead of the commissioning and distribution of the ambulances on January 28. Our reporter Joseph Armstrong has been following this development and has come through with his report. All is set for the distribution of the pre-hospital ambulances that is said to be distributed on 28th of this month as promised by the government. As you can see, everything has been fixed in there. The ambulances you see here will no longer be here but will be distributed to the various constituencies for them to be used for the benefit of women in labour and children and all patients that need them. At the forecourt of Parliament House on Monday morning, personnel of the National Ambulance Service while they're going dress for his house ahead of the commissioning and distribution. The rehearsal would continue until a day before commissioning. The commissioning and distribution of the ambulances was supposed to take place on 6th January, but it was postponed following the recommendation by the National Ambulance Service. A letter written and signed by each chief executive Dr. Ahmed Zakaria indicated that a number of preparatory activities which should have been completed prior to the commissioning and distribution of the ambulances were behind schedule. They included training for staff and paramedics on the use of the ambulances and medical equipment. Another reason for the request for postponement was the digitization of the ICT dispatch system which would allow the routine of calls through a computer system which will automatically generate digital address location of the caller to enable the control center easily determine the nearest ambulance to dispatch. According to the service, tracking devices being installed were ongoing and would be completed in the third week of January. The other reason were the delay in the completion of the service centers and the labeling of the ambulances. The chief executive officer of the National Ambulance Service, Professor Ahmed Zakaria, who declined to speak on camera Monday, confirmed the training and installation of medical equipment has been completed. Joseph Armstrong, TV3, Accra. That certainly is some good news that uh, a lot of us will be uh, smiling about or are happy about. At least, we do know that by that 28th, we should have the ambulances distributed, commissioned and distributed. We've been joined in studio by Dr. Anthony Insia Asari, he's uh, uh, president, sorry, presidential advisor on health. Uh, will be helping us understand the, you know, the modalities of the distribution, etc. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us in studio. Good evening. To start with, do we have the full complement of the ambulances now? Yes, we have the full complement of the ambulances, fully equipped. We also have the full set of the people who will use it. Okay. We've trained both drivers and emergency medical technicians and technologists who will be using the ambulances. The ambulances. And the, if you say it's uh, fully fitted with all the necessary requirements, what and what would we see in a regular ambulance? If you say? What we see in a regular ambulance first is a bed. We have what also we call the resuscitation kits. We have oxygen inside. We have AED where we can use it when somebody gets heart attack and mm. then he's brought back to life. We have everything. In fact, ambulances are like a small or miniature uh, theater where okay. you can walk in. Sometimes... If you, doctors are called to do emergency tracheostomy in the ambulance, mm. so that when you pick any patient, we resuscitate the patient from the point of injury or the point where he was called to the hospital. The most important thing about ambulances is that you pick the patient if he's alive or mm. if he's near to be alive. You resuscitate the patient, and within the shortest possible time, the patient is sent to the emergency center or to mm. the hospital. Mm. That's the essence of ambulance. Ambulance is not any ordinary vehicle that you just put a bed in mm. and they say, oh, that's ambulance. Mm. No. In Ghana, we have a lot of vehicles that we have seen, we call them ambulances. They don't fit. But it's ambulances to the specification, to international International standards. Okay. That, that was what I wanted to know, whether it's, uh, you know, built for our, our, our conditions or it's global standard. It's global standard. Global standard. Yes. With the, the training you're talking about, so the... Staff that have been trained, they all know about these things and how to deploy them when and as and when necessary. Yeah, that's the reason why the president didn't commission it on the 6th of January. Okay. Because those, the manufacturers of the ambulance were not in. They came in, I think, on the 13th. Mm -hmm. So as you rightly said, from the 13th, I think today, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they've trained almost all the uh, 
drivers who are going back to the regions. And they'll be the trainers of the other people who didn't come here. Okay. So they pick drivers, they pick EMT staff, and they brought them here as trainers of trainers. Mm. So they have been trained and they'll go back and, and train, train everybody in every constituency. And I believe there's going to be, you know, the consistent training or regular update on the training uh, as and when necessary as well. Yeah, luckily we have a school at in King Kensu in the office of North, mm -hmm. where we train our emergency medical team and the ambulance drivers. Okay. So we just don't pick them. So we are training them. In fact, we are thinking even of upgrading them and upgrading the school to diploma and also even degree awarding institutions. Okay. That's one thing. For this ambulance scheme, is going, we want to have a system in place. Not that you bring the ambulances after four years. Right. They are vehicles. Mm. So if you don't sustain them, if you don't maintain them, if you don't train people over and over again, and you don't set a system in place, we will have the ambulances and come three, four years. We, we, we go back well, and we'll be looking at the place. concern of maintenance and then also even the nature of our roads that these ambulances will be driving on. But let's look at the concern the president raised, one of which having to do with the, the fact that he didn't want to start distributing when we didn't have all of it. What is the criteria of distribution? And we're told by that 28th, we will know where which ones are going. What is the criteria? What's you the know, criteria? we normally say it's one ambulance, one constituency, one ambulance. Right. The whole idea about one constituency, one ambulance is that at least every locality in this country is a constituency. Mm. A constituency covers an area. So I would rather call it, those where the ambulances will be are also what you call hotspots. So every hotspot will have an ambulance, okay. which is within the constituency. We have 275 uh, constituencies, but the ambulances are 307. So they are more than the 275 mm -hmm. ambulances. But as a country, we need more than that. Yeah. We need about 1,000, 1,200, 1,500. So consistently, what we are going to do is that we will make sure that we will be adding on and if you add on and you don't maintain the ones that you have, it means it will come to a time that the 307 mm. will all run out and mm. then they will come to a hold. That's exactly the situation you have found ourselves in now. Okay. And never again shall Should we go be. into that situation as a country. And the criteria for distribution? The criteria for distribution that at least every constituency will get. So it will just be? Yes, first. Automate, and, then, and then the deployment. others, the, about how many will be left? I think about... Uh, if you 30, take out the 275 from the 300, 30, 32 yes. left, then we'll look at where the spots, the hotspots are and locate them. And it will still be under the management of National Ambulance Service. Okay. And then going forward, after the distribution, we also make sure that the ambulances came should mm. also have some spare parts. Okay. We, should, we also have made sure that it will have places where they will be maintained. Luckily, mm -hmm. Almost all the regions, uh, the northern sector, the middle belt, and the southern sector, mm -hmm. we have Ghana Health Service has a maintenance workshop. Facilities there. So we will be, we've gone in Ghana Health Service, before I left Ghana Health Service, was also talking to National Ambulance Service to use them, equip them. Mercedes Benz will train them, and the spare parts will be available. Mm. Because if you go for routine maintenance, you go for any small thing that you see is wrong with the ambulance, it's repaired. An ambulance will lack law, so that can can What will happens have the value to money. the already existing fifty? Are we looking at upgrading them to the standard of these new ones, or we are discarding them to no, we'll probably use parts of from we pull out some of the parts and use them as spare parts for the new ones? No, we won't discard them. That is the idea. I mean, we don't have to throw them away. In fact, if you ask me, I think we should even look at the already broken down ones. Okay, we can. Do we can take some parts mm. and then fit into others and then at least claim some few of them. Okay. All these things have been put in place so that there will be a system. If I'm, I'm stressing on system. Because if we don't have a system, it means whatever we are doing, we'll come back and say there are no ambulances in the system. Okay. And talking about sustainability, it means there should be some funds for also doing all these things. Okay. I'm sure you'll come to that. Uh, unfortunately, we may have to leave it here for now, but then uh, it's uh, an interesting conversation, clearly due to the fact that in a matter of a week or less than a week or just about within a week, there's going to be a distribution of ambulances. So we'll be on the lookout for it. We'll be following the distribution and then also uh, be updating our viewers across the country. But thank you for making time to speak with us. Dr. Anthony Siansari is um, a presidential advisor on health, former 
uh, President of Ghana Health Service. Uh, thank you very much.